ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم first this is a, a blessed hour the hour before maghrib which is the most likely hour for the dua to be accepted on the day of Jumu'ah. As the Prophet ﷺ, when he mentioned this hour, and he called it Sa'a, and Sa'a is a unit of time, a very short one, that he said ﷺ, about this hour, ما من عبد مسلم قائم يصلي يسأل الله تبارك وتعالى إلا أعطاه الله ما يسأل أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام, there is no Muslim, عليكم السلام, that we can salah in this time, Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, must Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him. And this is not a time where the salah is valid as a choice, except the Hayatul Masjid and the like of it. But as uh, Abdullah ibn Salam, the Sahabi, and others, they say, it's the time after or before Maghrib, when a person is in the Masjid waiting for the salah, he is in salah. So many, they say that this hour is just before Maghrib in the day of Jumu'ah. Uh, so being in the house of Allah in the masjid, making remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making salah on the Prophet والسلام, which is something that is very stressed in the day of Jumu'ah, and making dua. And making dua doesn't have to be that a person would face the qibla and raise his hands and make dua. This is definitely the best. But while a person is sitting in the gatherings where the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered, is to, for example, a person say, Allahumma ghfirli. Or he, something is mentioned, a person would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the bounty of Allah. Or ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody knows when the dua will be accepted. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless this gathering for us. The subject is the way of the people of Ahl Sunnah or Jama'ah in the tazkiyah and the purification of oneself. And uh, this subject, as you see, I made some, took some notes here. There's so many uh, texts in the Quran, in the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, in the statements of the Sahaba, the Tabi'een, the Ulama of this Ummah about the subject. Uh, so it's very difficult to make it in, in just uh, two sessions or to exactly to choose what subject to talk about in this broad subject. And this is one of the main duties if it's correct to say, of the Prophet ﷺ. then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him for this. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his favor upon the believers when he sent among them a messenger from among themselves. What this messenger do, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recite unto them the ayat of Allah. And then the second thing is, وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ This is the meaning, this is the word of tazkiyah. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ To purify them. That's why the word tazkiyah and the word zakah comes from an increase of something. Comes of uh, the meaning of purification of something and increasing of something else. Purifying all of the impurities and all of the evil things and increasing in them all the meanings of beautiful things and matters of deen and iman. So this is what the Prophet والسلام, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to mankind for this. For those who believe in the Prophet والسلام, and follow him, he recite unto them the Quran الكتاب والحكم, and he teach them Al-Kitab which is the Quran and the Hikmah, the wisdom which is the Sunnah of the Prophet and in which they were before in clear astray. Uh, so this is the entire deen of Islam. And that's why the word that the skaya or purification of the soul, uh, without talking about the deviation first, we're not going to talk about this now, but when people uh, start to uh, you know, want to be among those who are purified, which is a need in every believer or anyone that would be a Muslim, he wants to purify himself. But many people, they deviated in the subject when they turned away 
from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and the way of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, the way of the people of Ahl Sunnah or Jama'ah, and they start using their own taste and like and feelings and so on. And that led them astray. And this is one of the things that we we'll see some of the statements of the people of knowledge with regards to this. But first, and only few, few texts to remind us of this, the importance of the subject. And inshallah ta'ala today, we have today and tomorrow inshallah. Today we'll talk about some of the principles that the people of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, they followed in the subject of purifying oneself. And it's not going to be uh, as it would sound or it seems to be something that would fit the desires of the human beings, as we would see, inshallah ta'ala, the purification of one's soul according to the, the truth and the way the Prophet sallam, it requires effort and mujahada and suppressing our own desires to some extent for the person to reach uh, a state where he is in state of purifying himself. And it's not going to be with jumping and dancing and music and things like this as some deviants, they think this is the way to purify themselves. It's not based on feelings because people, when they take drugs, they feel good. People, when they listen to music, they feel good. It's not about feeling purified. It's about really being purified. And as they say, when you have a, a wound, to clean the, the wound, you have to feel, to feel pain first. And then after some time, the pain is gone. So it is not a painful thing, but the truth comes before feelings and experience, personal experiences and things like this. And that's why one of the major differences between the people of Ahl Sunnah and others is the subject of al-ilm, the haqq, the truth, that comes before everything else, before action, before feelings, before taste. Al-ilm qabla al-qawli wa al-amal. Knowledge before speech and actions. And this ilm is the wahy from Allah, the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet Ali Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, qad aflaha man zakkah wa qad khaba man dasah. He is successful, the one that zakkaha purified it which is his soul, his own self. And this is in Surah Al-Shams, after swearing in nine verses from the beginning of the Surah about the signs of Allah. And when you have Qasam, uh, then you're looking for Jawab Al-Qasam. When you say, by Allah, I will do this, I will do this, this is the Jawab, this is the answer to the Qasam. So when you're making Qasam or taking an oath, it's done for something great. So what is the something great that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala swears for? is قَدَ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَهَ وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَ وَالشَّمْسِ وَضُحَاهَ وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا جَلَّهَ وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَهَ وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا طَحَاهَ وَنَفْسِي وَمَا سَوَاهَ فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدَ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَهَ So all of these ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by his signs and one of which this nafs, this nafs is an amazing thing. It's the creation of Allah that we do not even know the essence of it. And it's one of the miraculous signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our own self. وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَهَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to look into our own selves. وَفِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَفَلَا تُبُصِرُونَ And in your own selves, shouldn't you see? So we as human beings, we don't have to look further away for the miraculous signs from Allah. We can look into our own selves. And one of which our own souls, our own self. And we'll talk later, inshallah ta'ala, about the soul and the nafs and so on. So, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ He is successful, the one that purified himself. And it's very obvious that it's not the physical purification of one's body. Even though this is part of our religion and it has an effect definitely in purification of the soul because it's part of being obedient to Allah. So when someone clean himself, purify himself according to the sharia, according to the orders of Allah, to make salah, cleaning himself physically from impurities, making wudu, making ghusl. He's doing that physically, and he is also purifying his own soul and his own nafs to make the salah or to read Quran, which has an effect. And there's always a strong relationship between the physical actions and the non-physical uh, being of oneself. And this is the ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it in the religion. Because the inside, our own self, we have no control over it, over it whatsoever. Nobody has any control over his own heart even. But we have by the will of Allah, by the permission of Allah, control by the permission of Allah to our physical body. 
And that's why the level of Islam comes before the level of Iman and the level of Ihsan. The level of Islam is in the capacity of everybody. Submit yourself physically to the orders of Allah. This is an obligation, do it. This is haram, stay away from it. Uh, and so on. And this definitely how a person would affect his, uh, his heart and his nafs. And this is how to purify oneself. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ تَزَكَّ He is successful, the one that purified himself. And we hear this almost every Friday when the Prophet ﷺ would recite Surah Al-A'la and Al-Ghashiyya in Salatul Jumu'ah. So we always hear and they always heard that he is successful, the one that purified himself. So you can imagine how the Sahaba radiallahu anhum heard this from the Prophet ﷺ many times when he's reciting Quran and the difference between the Sahaba and those who came after them is that the Sahaba, was, they were so truthful in every word they heard. And when we just uh, stop there for a minute, and when we're talking about purifying ourselves, who is the most purified generation ever walked on the face of earth? The generation of the Sahaba. So what happened to the Sahaba? They were in Jahiliyyah. They were in ignorance in the days of Jahiliyyah. And they, you know, the how, how, and it's very important to know even how Jahiliyyah was. And this is preserved also. And what they were upon in Jahiliyyah, fighting with one another, committing all kinds of evil and sinful acts, what happened to them to become the best generation ever brought to mankind? How did they reach that level of being so purified and the zakah and the tazkiyah of their nafs? Nothing the like of it in any generation ever brought to mankind. What happened to them? Did they have books of philosophy? And they did they translate the works of the East and the Greeks and the West and so on. And they did all kinds of crazy things to themselves to purify themselves. Did they dance and jump and do all kinds of things thinking that this is to purify themselves? What did they do? The Prophet ﷺ was among them. And the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran is revealed. And with them, the best man ever walked on the face of earth, the best to raise this generation is the Prophet ﷺ. And the truthfulness in them, when they would see how the Quran explained by speech and actions of the Prophet ﷺ, and when they submitted themselves and followed the Prophet ﷺ, in this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed them and transformed them. And this is one of the very basic foundation of this, that this is all from Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that changes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that purifies a person. And it's not the, the human being. The human being, they take the actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered them to take. And then the rest is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change them. So this is something to keep in mind always. So that we don't argue or to think, well, this method works. This other method works. This or that. Somebody said this. Someone said something else. The matter is much simpler and easier than that. But always to think, what did they do? And it's not a secret. It's something that is... Uh, present and we can just learn it the way of the companions of the Allah Anum and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed them. Uh, as we heard that this is the job of the messenger and this is the job of the messengers of Allah. When Musa alayhi salam said to Fir'aun, ila anta ila He's saying to Fir'aun, offering to him, do you halaka ila anta zakka? Would you have would you accept this offer for you to tazakka, for you to be purified, to be elevated, and to increase in goodness? And I would guide you to your Lord so that you would fear him. This is Musa is saying to Fir'aun. And the Prophet was sent to make the tazkiyah. And there are more evidences like that in the Quran. And this would lead us to the first principle among the people of Ahl al-Sunnah when it comes to the tazkiyah or purification of their soul is what? What was the message of Musa to Fir'aun? What did Musa call Fir'aun to do? And what did the Prophet ﷺ call the people of Quraysh to do? This is the subject of the tazkiyah, which is the tawheed of Allah. He called them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And without this, there is no tazkiyah and there is no purification and there is nothing. People are wasting their time if the foundation of this is not the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the Tawheed of Allah, the Aqeed of Allah, and we'll talk about this as the, the first principle and the foundation for any subject in our life and our deen 
has to be based on the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is da'wah to rusul, and this is the real tazkiyah. If we go through the verses in the Quran that talks about the subject, and again, as we said, there are many. And the rewards from Allah for the believers when they enter Jannah, this is the recompense of those who purified themselves. So we have a, re a really serious job in this life that we have to purify ourselves. We don't have a choice. This is a mandatory. This is an obligation upon us. This life is not a life of to relax and to have fun and to enjoy. So this is a serious life. We have a job to, to do and that is to purify ourselves. Because those who are purified, they would enter Jannah. And if they don't purify themselves in this life, well, either after they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either actions, forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will purify them, or if they die in the state of Islam and not yet purified perfectly, the hellfire purifies if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not forgive. So this is one of the... Uh, the, the things that the, the hellfire does to the believers. Those who die in the state of Islam, some of them, they enter the hellfire. What does the hellfire do to them? Purifies them. Like the fire when it purifies the gold. Right? So the, the believers, those who do not receive the forgiveness from Allah, because as we know, this is part of the belief of the people of Ahl Sunnah, that when people die, if they die as a Muslim, Either they die as a sinful Muslim or someone that repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from all sins. If they die in the state of sin, they did not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're Muslims. Either Allah would forgive that individual and therefore this is his purification. And Allah knows best who deserves to be forgiven and who's not. Or they will be treated by the justice of Allah and they will be punished. And then eventually they will enter Jannah. This punishment for the believers is this process of purification because they didn't do it in this life. This is how serious the matter of purifying ourselves and understanding that this is the job of the message of the Prophet ﷺ to be purified. So it's not just some nice talk about purification of the soul and being righteous people. This is an obligation because it's either in this life or a person, Allah knows best, if he dies as a Muslim, then either will be forgiven or he will be purified to enter Jannah because Jannah is pure and only the pure will enter Jannah. So the message of the messengers is the message of the Tawheed, which is the foundation, and then what perfects it afterwards. <laughs> From the dua of the Prophet ﷺ, that he used to say, Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha, zakiha, anta khayru man zakkaha, anta waliyuha, wa mawlaha. And this is another point that we should talk about also, inshallah. The Tawheed is one point. The second one is the Dua. Because the Dua is the, is the tool and the means for the believers to achieve anything in this life. Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, Salu Allah kulla shay. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything, no exception. If a person finds himself that he's not asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything, this is a weakness. Because everything is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As'alullah min fadli. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his bounties. Right? So, salullah kulla shay. They used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even for the salt and the food. So, and therefore, the major uh, things in our life, which is tazkiyah to nafs, purification of ourself, to be obedient to Allah. How can a person do it without asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And this is why many people, they fall into the sins and even bid'ah and other things because they they think that they can rely upon themselves in doing it. No, you, you rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you take the means and you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with dua, especially in these times of fitan. So Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha zakiha and takhayru man zakah. Wa Allah give myself its taqwa to be among the people of taqwa. Zakiha, purify it, and takhayru man zakah. You, Allah, is the one that is best in purifying it because it's owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ati nafsi taqwa zakiya anta khayru man zakaha anta waliyuha wa mawla. You are its wali, the nafs is wali, the protector, the helper, wa mawlaha, the owner of it. So you leave the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity. And this is a beautiful dua from the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam. Another thing is when the Prophet والسلام, the subject was still talking about the tazkiyah and the importance of it. When the Prophet وسلم, 
He was asked directly in a sound narration, and this is in Surah Abi Dawood, and it's a sound hadith, and uh, the hadith is authenticated also by Sheikh Al-Bani, rahimahullah, part of a hadith, that the Prophet ﷺ was asked, ما تسكية النفس? He was asked directly like this. What is the tazkiya, the purification of oneself? What is it? And this is part of the hadith where in this particular narration when the Prophet ﷺ talked about three things, whoever does them, he would taste the taste of or the sweetness of al-iman. Thalathun man fa'alahun. In this narration says man fa'alahun. Dhaqa ta'ma al-iman. Three things, whoever uh, does these three things, he will taste ta'ma al-iman. Ta'ma is the taste. Dhawq is the taste, but it's uh, an how to translate it in English in the right way. Anything has a ta'm, has a taste to it. But dhawq is more of a personal experience for the taste of that thing. Right? So dhaqa ta'am al-iman. He would taste what al-iman tastes like. And in these narrations that an yakuna Allah wa rasulu, an yakuna Allah wa rasulu wa habba ilayhi min masiwahuma. That Allah and His Messenger وسلم, is more beloved to Him than anything else. That a person would love a person, he only love him for the sake of Allah. That he would hate to go to kufr the same way that he would hate to go to the hellfire. But in that particular narration, this three in this specific words is not mentioned like this. But to be short, when the Prophet وسلم, uh, mentioned this, and he was asked, "Ma tazkiyatun nafs? What is tazkiyatun nafs? What is the pu- how how would a person purify himself?" The Prophet ﷺ said one sentence. He said, "An yālama an Allah ma'ahu haythu kan." An yālam an Allah ma'ahu haythu kan. That he would know that person if he wants to purify himself, that he know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is with him. Haythu can, wherever he is. He knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with him. He is a Samiul Basir. He's the all hearer, the all seer, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows a sirra wa akhfa. He knows the secret and what's more hidden than the secret. He knows your intention. And as some said, he hears your intentions. The intention doesn't have a sound. Allah hears it. Allah knows it. He knows the whims, the desires. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. And he sees what's in the hearts. In Allah, la yanzuru ila suwarikum, wala ila jisamikum, walakin yanzuru ila qulubikum wa amalikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not see or look at your outside appearance, your physical appearance, meaning this is not what is important because Allah created us in different shapes and colors. And, and this is this physical body it does not make a person uh, honored or humiliated or degraded. This is the foolishness of the human beings. But to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, walakin Allah yanzur, but rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at your hearts and your actions. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees what's in our hearts. So an ya'lama anna Allah ma'ahu haythu kan. And this is basically is sufficient for a person to apply the deen of Allah in its entirety without forgetting that statement. Because this is what the Prophet ﷺ exactly said of how to purify oneself. That a person knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with him, haythu kan. And ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tara, this is the level of al-ihsan. And therefore, this is the levels of purifying oneself, al-Islam, al-Iman, al-Ihsan. That a person knows that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, sees him. And ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tara, you worship Allah as if you see Allah. And if you don't see Allah, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing you. Which is the lowest level of the level of al-Ihsan. That this is how a person would purify himself. Uh, one last thing in this uh, introduction to the subject is um, what uh, Ibn Al Qayyim, rahimahullah, uh, he said something in this uh, in the subject in the in the book of Madarij Salikin. This is one of the books, but a person has to study it by a student of knowledge of something so that. Uh, some things might be misunderstood in this book, but it's a beautiful book in, in talking about the nafs and the levels of Ubudiyah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said something, and I would, uh, if you bear with me, just before Maghrib, we'll finish this part, and then after Maghrib, inshallah ta'ala, we'll talk about these principles of the people of Ahl sunnah He says, Tazkiyatun nufus, 
تسكيتل نفوس the purification of one's self أصعب من علاج الأبدان is more difficult than dealing with the physical body and the means of cure of the physical body is to purify oneself وأشد أصعب من علاج الأبدان وأشد it's more intense it's more difficult فمن زكى نفسه and before we go further it's more difficult but nobody has an excuse not to do it and as if you this is something that should be always repeated the physical body we have limitations and some people have more strength than others some people can run some people cannot run some people can stand in salah some people cannot stand in the salah some people have money to give zakah some people don't so people the physical aspects of things people are in levels on this but when it comes to the heart Everybody has the same strength in their hearts. So there's no excuse when it comes to the deeds of the heart for someone to say, I'm weak. No, nobody's weak when it comes to the heart. The heart is pumping. So that means everybody has the same chance and equal opportunity for everyone to have the highest strength in the heart. And that's what makes the deeds done by the heart easier than the physical ones. Because nobody has an excuse to miss it. So if someone says, well, ikhlas, Sincerity is a difficult thing for me. I'm a weak person. I'm very old in age. I cannot be sincere. It doesn't make sense. You're old in age. You cannot stand in the salah. Sit down. And you get the same reward, inshallah ta'ala. And if you're not able to sit down, you lay down. But to say that I'm weak, I'm not able to have ikhlas. I'm not able to fear Allah, which is a deed done by the heart. I'm not able to hope rewards from Allah. I don't have the ability to love Allah. This is all ignorance and it doesn't work this way. But it's the weakness that a person has to work on himself. But to work on these things, it's difficult. It's more difficult than working on the physical matters. The physical matter, you move your hand, your, your legs, but the heart, since it's owned by Allah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that changes it. That's why a person will turn to Allah and also take the means as it's mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. He will change and he will purify the heart. So this is the the meaning of it that this is how difficult or more difficult than the physical one. So he says, فَمَنْ زَكَّ نَفْسَهُ Whoever purified himself. بِالْرِيَاضَ Riyadah is not sports. This is, this is the same word that is used for sports in Arabic. And what sports is that you keep on training yourself and working yourself till you transform yourself from one level to the other. Till you have strength to do what you're training yourself to achieve. The same thing with one's Self, you have to do riyadah. We have to train ourselves and our hearts to be sincere and to have the fear of Allah and to, to purify ourselves. So he said, whoever purify himself with this, mujahada, and struggling with oneself, khalwa, uh, to seclude yourself. These three words, is that a good thing? No, he says, لم يجيء بها الرسل. If a person do these three things in a way that the messengers of Allah did not come with, because these are the things that people think or they say or they preach. This is how to purify yourself, to exert yourself, to seclude yourself, to say these things a million times, to do this, whatever you go to the jungle, all these types of things. You would find it in the books of those who talked about a suluk and purifying themselves and so on. If it's not something that the messengers of Allah came with, if it's not something that the final messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, came with and said it clearly and did it, alayhi salatu wasalam, if a person does these things to purify himself, he says, huwa kal marid alladhi yu'aliju nafsahu bi'a'i. He's exactly the same person as someone sick, and he is treating himself while being sick with his own opinion. وَأَيْنَ يَقَعْ رَأْيُهُ مِنْ مَعْرِفَةِ الطَّبِيبِ and what is his opinion compared to the knowledge of the, of the medical doctor? Right? Imagine someone is seriously ill and he has no knowledge whatsoever of medicine and he's making his own opinions of what to take and what not to take. He will kill himself. So this is exactly the same way when someone is working on purifying himself without following the messenger, وسلم, he would ruin himself. And this is what happened to people when they took this path, thinking that they are working on themselves, but they end up, end up ruining themselves because they didn't follow the way the Messenger saw So he says, الرسل الْقُلُوبِ the, the plural of tabib, 
So the, the doctor or the, the physician or whatever they, they call it, the messengers of Allah are the ones that are the means to purify and to cure the hearts. There's no way to purify ourselves and to have righteousness except illa min tariqim, except from their way, from the ways of the messengers of Allah. And by their hands and by their actions. And by the pure submission and taslim, submitting oneself, surrendering oneself to the ways of the Messenger وسلم, and we ask help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how tazkiyah to nafs, when a person wants to really purify himself, the only way to do that is through the way the Prophet So it's not again going to be, try this and it works. Because the nafs is very tricky, as we know. So we do not know the outcome of it. We do not know what a person is when he's purified. We only know the, the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for a person to be pleasing and, and seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, it's time for the We'll stop here inshallah ta'ala and then after Maghrib we'll continue with the means of the people of Ahl-Sunnah purifying oneself. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.